there's a number of positive aspects to this type of work. It's just that I believe that they just aren't compensated fairly. Tonight, a first alert investigation as severe staffing shortages plague state prisons. A leaders hope to address the growing problem that has taxpayers on the hook for millions. From WBAY TV, your first alert station, Action 2 News at 6 starts now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Crisis. That's the word both Republicans and Democrats use to describe the drastic shortage of correctional officers in Wisconsin's prisons. More than a half dozen institutions are missing at least a quarter of their workforce. Two prisons have barely half the staff they need. And it's costing taxpayers tens of millions of dollars in overtime and forcing the Department of Corrections to find new ways to recruit and retain employees. In a first alert investigation, Sarah Thompson found out how money is driving a major push for change. It is at a crisis level. And I think we're at crisis right now. It's rare to hear lawmakers on both sides of the aisle agree. The state's correctional system is in trouble. Vacancies at our, at our agency are um, really high. Across Wisconsin, vacancy rates among correctional officers and sergeants are soaring to levels unseen pre-pandemic. Even with 51 officer openings, Green Bay Correctional is among the most staffed maximum security prisons in the state at a 22% vacancy rate. Oshkosh sits at 25%, Tachita nearly 32%, Dodge 35, Wisconsin Secure Program Facility 38. And look at these two, Columbia Correctional, 46% vacancy rate, and Waupon Correctional has 136 correctional officer and sergeant positions open, a 47% vacancy rate. There's just um, low pay, tough working conditions, dangerous work, lots of overtime, um, uh, impact on the quality of life for the people that work in corrections. We sat down with Corrections Secretary Kevin Carr to ask what the DOC is doing to address the massive shortages. How do you make it attractive? One of the things that um, we're doing is we're offering, offering a $2,000 signing bonus. The agency is looking at very unconventional ways for a prison to recruit. A giant now hiring flag flies outside GBCI. The DOC is airing radio and TV ads, using social media, attending job fairs, even trying to change state law to allow billboard advertising. It's currently the only state agency that cannot recruit that way. The only thing that we haven't done and we have no control over is the rate of compensation. And that's where the legislature comes in. The DOC is banking on raising pay significantly up to $12 an hour for some employees. There are two proposals, though neither has yet seen action in Madison. The first is a compensation plan. It would increase starting wages for officers by 47 cents, temporarily increase pay $5 an hour for correctional officers and sergeants at adult prisons with combined vacancy rates of 40% or higher until those rates drop below 40% for six straight months. It also includes a 2% general wage adjustment for all employees each of the next two years. The Joint Committee on Employment Relations will have to hold a hearing to consider that. The other proposal is something called a companion bill and requires the first plan to pass. It calls for a $5 pay increase for almost all officers, sergeants and youth counselors, plus another permanent $2 add-on for security staff at max security prisons. Well, that pay increase for the more than 4,600 officers and sergeants statewide sounds like a lot of money. We discovered the DOC has paid out more than $62 million for nearly 2 million hours of overtime over the last two fiscal years, which runs summer to summer. The DOC did not provide overtime data since July of this year. Do you think you can get people without that increase? Well, it's awful tough, okay, and some of our um, outlying areas, we're competing with local businesses like Quick Trip or Walmart, where they're giving signing bonuses and those starting wages are, you know, in the low to mid 20s. 
why would you accept a job at the Department of Corrections for $19 an hour when you could work at Walmart for $23 an hour? I'm incredibly concerned, as everybody really should be in Wisconsin. Maybe you can get away with a half-staff half level at McDonald's, but you can't at a maximum security prison. Representatives Gordon Hintz and Dave Steffen represent communities housing two prisons with serious staff shortages, Oshkosh and Green Bay. It's up to the legislature to pass these proposed wage increases in the aforementioned companion bill. Yes, I would absolutely support it. And again, it would have to be a sunset temporary type thing. This is really a Band-Aid, you know, hold back the flood type situation, that uh, the emergency type situation that we need to address. I support, you know, the 2% two, the two and 2% and in getting that approved as quickly as possible. Um, I certainly support getting anything done that can, you know, fill um, you know, the gap in the short term, if that's the incentives that it takes to get people uh, to work in these positions, then I think we're seriously going to have to look at it. Both agree this would only be a temporary fix, but disagree on a long-term staffing solution. Hintz says the criminal justice system needs to be reimagined to look at other ways to ensure public safety and justice. Stefan is again pushing for the decommissioning of GBCI and the construction of a new state-of-the-art facility that could operate with less staff. We found this detailed master facilities plan, a three-year independent study submitted to the Department of Administration late last year, concluding evaluation and planning for eventual replacement of both Green Bay and Waupun are needed, and suggested staffing was already an issue, writing at GBCI, the current generation may not be looking at corrections as a career. Staffing shortages are being addressed by significant overtime hours. High vacancy rates um, directly correlate to safety issues and programmatic issues in our facilities. In the meantime, the DOC is taking other measures, closing an entire cell hall at Waupun and creating supplemental staffing. About 230 workers from 14 more well-staffed prisons have so far volunteered or been forced to rotate two-week stints, a handful at a time, at Waupun Correctional to fill the major gaps. Next month, the same plan will start at Columbia Correctional. So what about the ones who are doing the work? I spoke with some correctional officers off camera who agree throwing money at the problem is not a long-term fix, and they don't know if it's really enough to entice a new generation of employees to the job but they are optimistic it could keep experienced staff. Now, no hearings or discussions have been scheduled on any of these proposals yet, but we will keep an eye on it and be the first to update you on any new developments. Right now on Action 2 News at 6, lawmakers meet about the severe staffing shortages at Wisconsin prisons. The moves made in Madison today in an update to a first alert investigation. From WBAY TV, your first alert station, Action 2 News at 6 starts now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Bill has the night off. At a last minute hearing in Madison today, lawmakers approved some pay raises to address the state's critical staffing shortages in prisons. But it falls far short of what the Department of Corrections says it needs in order to keep the prison system running safely. In a first alert investigation earlier this month, we found out many of the state's maximum security prisons are operating with a more than 20% officer vacancy rate, and two prisons are operating at barely half staff. Sarah Thompson joins us with an update to her first alert investigation with the moves made in Madison today and what happens next. Those pay increases of up to $12 an hour for some correctional officers that we first told you about a few weeks ago will not happen. In fact, only a fraction of a pay raise was approved at a hearing today, scheduled less than 24 hours earlier before the Joint Committee on Employment Relations. As that hearing started this morning, I looked at the state's vacancy rates, finding 1101 open positions statewide at DOC. Just after the hearing ended around noon today, that number had increased by 25 more employees. Lawmakers argue the problem is not going away. They agree on that, but they cannot agree on how to pay to fix it. This dashboard, operated by the Department of Corrections, tracks the rising record vacancy rates and staff shortages within the state's prison system. It's numbers to most of us. 
But to the people left to fill those correctional officer jobs, it's flashing messages of danger. Uh, frankly, it's just not safe. Uh, we cannot even hold up our mission statement. There was one night they were running third shift with 10 staff for 900 inmates. And the examples kept coming from corrections officer Lucas Meyer, who works at Dodge Correctional in Waupon. Uh, we had a fight out in the barracks unit recently, which houses 72 unsecured inmates. We had one blue shirt responder. Correctional officers told the Joint Committee on Employment Relations they're exhausted, with some being forced to work 18-hour days, the most allowed by law. Altogether, that puts me at over 5,277 hours worth of overtime in less than five years that I work for the state. It's racking up big bucks at taxpayer expense. As we first told you in our original investigation, the Department of Corrections spent nearly $62 million in the last two fiscal years on overtime. Today, we learned just since July, DOC has spent more than $13 million of taxpayer money in overtime to cover vacant officer positions. At some point, people reach a breaking point, and that's when they leave. Administrators and Secretary Kevin Carr told lawmakers he has done what he can without spending money and even has some wardens covering some officer shifts. But he argued wages must increase in order to attract and retain workers. Our proposal puts us in a more competitive position with local employers in neighboring states. After more than two hours of similar with testimony, that, Clerk will call the roll. The committee voted unanimously to pass a compensation bill. It offers some relief, a 47 cent starting wage increase for correctional officers, a temporary $5 add-on for officers and sergeants at adult prisons, but only those with a 40% or higher vacancy rate, lasting until it drops below 40% for six straight months. It also approved a 2% general wage adjustment for all employees each of the next two years. This has to be the beginning of the long-term investment because it's only going to get tighter and it's only going to get more expensive. And I think uh, there's a consequence of not acting. There was a second plan called a companion bill that could have added up to another $7 per hour. It would have gone to the legislature for approval, but it failed to pass this committee along party lines. The sticking point for Republicans? the lack of federal rescue plan money being used to address the shortage. If the governor isn't allocating any ARPA funds to DOC out of this latest round, why is that if you're still seeing ongoing pandemic related costs? The committee voted to urge the governor to find a way to use those federal dollars to address the shortage, but no specifics were given.